In this lesson, we're going to learn how to balance a nuclear uh, equation. So before we learn to balance this, and I've written out a nuclear equation here, uh, we have to look at what nuclear notation is. Now, nuclear notation is a way to recognize um, the number of protons and neutrons in a particular atom of an element. So let's just take a look at this substance right here. This is uranium, the symbol U. But uranium comes in a number of different varieties. There could be uranium uh, 235, uranium 238, and the difference between them is the number of neutrons. Now, what can't vary is the number of protons. And then in nuclear notation, we put the number of protons in the lower left. When I look at the periodic table, the atomic number, that's what this is right here, this is the atomic number, the atomic number of uranium is 92. So that's not variable. That has to be 92. If it's any other number, well, then it's not uranium. For example, if it were a 93, it would be Neptunium, not uranium. I'm just getting that off the periodic table. So the atomic number is equal to the number of protons. And the number of protons determines the identity of the element and determines what symbol we use. What is variable, though, is the number up top, on the upper left. That 235, 235, well, that is what we call the atomic mass. And the atomic mass of an atom is made up of the protons, which is a fixed number, plus the neutrons. But the number of neutrons in an atom possesses can be variable. Different atoms of the same element can have different number of neutrons. We use a fancy word in science that we call them isotopes. This happens to be the isotope of uranium, where the protons plus the neutrons equals 235. So when we write the name of this element, or this isotope, we want to distinguish, well, which one is this? Well, this is uranium-235, so we call this uranium-235. Now, uh, we're going to use that type of notation in this nuclear reaction, and the key to balancing a nuclear reaction is to make sure that all the atomic masses on one side of the arrow equal all the atomic masses on the other side of the arrow. In other words, the atomic mass, the cumulative atomic mass of all of the reactants, that would be on this side of the re reaction, is equal to the atomic mass of all of the reactants on this side. And the atomic number on this side is equal to the atomic number on this side. So the way, a way to think of it is the top numbers must equal the top numbers, and the bottom numbers must equal the bottom numbers over here. So top equals top, bottom equals bottom. Atomic masses on the top, atomic numbers on the bottom. So let's just do some quick math with this. Over on the reactant side of the equation, that'll be the left-hand side of the equation, we have uranium with 235 as its atomic mass, plus the neutron with one um, atomic mass would be equal to, well, we have to add up the other side, but this side's a little more complicated. We have three neutrons, each with an atomic mass of one. Right, that's right here. Three neutrons, each with an atomic mass of one, so it would be three times one. Plus, we have some element here. We don't know what this element is. This is element x. The per point of this is we're going to have to figure out, well, what is x? What, what would make this work? Well, x has a value of, for atomic mass of a. Don't know what a is? We're going to solve for that. And then we've got iodine, and iodine has an atomic mass of 137. Again, we're just adding together the top numbers here. So when I add this all together, on the reactive side, I have 236. And on the product side, I have A that I don't know what that is, plus 3 times 1 plus 137 is 3 plus 137 is 140. So, Relatively easy to solve for A. I'll just subtract 140 from both sides, and we'll end up with A is equal to 236 minus 140, and 236 minus 140, just check my calculator because I don't want to screw up the video at this point, that comes out to 96. Which means the atomic mass of element X is going to be 96. So just down here in the right symbol here, it's an X, we don't know what X is, we're going to figure that out in a minute, but we know that the value of A is 96. So now we have to figure out, well, what is the atomic number? That's the number that's going to go down here. So we have to add together the bottom. Make the bottom on the left equal the bottom on the right. The atomic number of the reactants equals the atomic number of the products. 
So for uranium, it's 92. Plus, now for the neutron here, it's zero. So we just go plus zero. And that is now going to be, well, here we've got zero again. So three times zero is just zero. Three times zero plus whatever B is. We don't know what B is, but we're going to solve it now. And for iodine, our atomic number down here is 53. So we're going to add 53. So we add up 92 and 0. This would be the total atomic number of the reactant side. Is equal to the total atomic number of the product side, which would be 3 times 0 is 0. So that's just going to be B plus 53. So I subtract 53 from both sides. I get B is equal to 92 minus 53, which means B is equal to 39. So if the value of B is 39, then I can now fill in the atomic number of element whatever X is as 39. Now, once I know that atomic number is 39, right there, I can find the identity of X. I know what X is going to be. I just need to go to my periodic table, and I need to find element number 39. And element number 39 is yttrium with the symbol of capital Y. So I can now replace that with a capital Y. And now I know that the element that will make this work is yttrium with an atomic mass of 96 and atomic number of 39, which means this is an isotope of yttrium, and we would write it like this. We would write yttrium dash. Now I have to ask myself, is it yttrium 96 or yttrium 39? Well, when we write an isotope, we write the atomic mass, not the atomic number. So this would be yttrium 96. So to make this equation balanced, then the identity of element X is going to be yttrium 96. So let's check out what an exam question will look like um, on the plumb exam for this. All right, so here we have one. Here we've got a natural form for, of decay for uranium-238. So here we have uranium-238 instead of uranium-235. So it's a different isotope of uranium. We need to find the identity of the question mark. We need to find out, well, what is that? So let's just do our little bit of math here. We're going to add up the reactant side. Well, that's easy because it's just 238. We're going to add up the top of the product side, which is our unknown. Uh, let's just call it A, plus for uh, this particle right here, we have a 4. So 238 is equal to A plus 4, so A is equal to 238 minus 4, which is 234. So we know whatever element we're talking about, it's going to be, uh, let's just call it X, with 234. Now, we also do the bottom. Over on the reactant side, we have 92. Right there, we have 92. And we have 2 over on this side. So it's going to be, let's just call this B plus 2. So B is equal to 92 minus 2. B is equal to 90. So that means we have a 90 right here. Once we have that number, that's our atomic number, we can look this number up on the periodic table and determine the identity of element X. So I just have to look up 90, and I look on my periodic table, I find 90 is thorium. So this X is actually going to be the uh, appropriate symbol for thorium. It's capital T, lowercase h. So we are dealing with an isotope called thorium-90. Oh, sorry, not 90. We need the atomic mass there, thorium-234, 234. So that tells us that our answer here is uh, either A or C. Now, in this video, I haven't shown you how to figure out what type of chemical reaction, sorry, nuclear reaction this is. 
This one happens to be alpha decay, but I'm going to be doing a video shortly so you can figure out uh, what's alpha decay, what's beta decay, what's a fission reaction, what's a fusion reaction. Uh, we'll be doing that in another video. The purpose of this video is just to figure out what that is to thorium 234.